I, I got the uh, NHL Game Center package last night. I was going to say, I know you got the package, didn't you? You sent mine with the Rangers. Yeah. Well, you're good. Mm. You're good till the Stanley Cup. Yep. I don't know, like February? Hmm? February, March? When's the Stanley Cup? The playoffs start in April. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. 82 games. Yeah, almost like, almost yeah. like basketball. Anyway, praise God. Praise the Lord. Good evening. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, you know, for the past few days, I was feeling like I was not hearing anything from God. And then today, he put some things in my heart that I want to share. Hopefully, it doesn't sound like I'm rambling, like I usually do. Because it's just a bunch of different things. He said, I will never leave you nor, or forsake you. I will give you a future. I will give you strength. I will help you. When we go through our trials, you know, we think like there's no solution. And then we turn to God. And little by little, things start getting better. You know, we, we're, we have all these worries, and then we come to a point that we're no longer worried because everything's going good. But because everything's going good, then we start to worry because there might be something wrong because there's nothing going on that's wrong, you know? Uh, so... I have this friend at work that something happened to her recently in her relationship and she's hurting a lot and I know she's not a believer but I do believe that the Lord is going to do something in her life and she's going to come to a point that She's going to hear the Holy Spirit Amen. speaking to her. Uh, because, you know, she's, she's uh, talking about, you know, this is unbearable and all those things. And I said, you know what? I've been where you are. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why we're friends. Sometimes my flesh, and possibly a combination of that along with the enemy, they try to get me to, to start thinking, you know, I feel so relaxed about what's happening. I'm not worried. Probably I don't miss my wife anymore. But then I look at her picture, boom, and the exact same feeling I had the first time I saw her comes back, and I know that it's because I'm trusting God that I have this peace and calmness inside of me. Uh, so, you know, other things have been uh, happening. I talked about Sunday here about this uh, lady that's trying to persecute some Christians in, back in, in Puerto Rico. Uh, and then my mom and I were talking about that and she was sharing something else too. And uh, I want to show you this picture. Um, that picture was taken Saturday night mm. at a concert, at a worship concert there that Jesus Culture played mm. for the first time. And during the concert, it was declared that the island will no longer be in darkness. Hallelujah. That the light of the Lord is going to shine on it and everything is going to be okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I love it. So, someone took this picture. They posted it in a in the website of a, a, a 
Christian radio station, and someone wrote the station and said, hey, look at that picture closely and see what's happening. At the end, those lights there, that's the shape of that. Wow. Wow. To me, that's a message from God. Yeah. Yeah. People have started to question, maybe that's a Photoshop uh, image and all that. And my mom was one of those that was saying, oh, maybe you know someone altered it and say, don't start questioning things. Yeah. Because you need to trust in what God is saying and what God's doing. Because once you start questioning things, that's when your opinions get in the way of his word. But I know that I have said many times that I don't want to go back. One of the reasons is because of the, the situation that's happening right now, but I know it's going to get better. But also, I know that that's not where I'm supposed to be for what he's calling me for. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to continue to look at him and to trust him and to speak his word and put everything on him and let him guide me through where I'm supposed to to walk and where I'm supposed to go and to put words in my mouth that I can speak to other people for Jesus to shine through me onto other people that they come to know him the way that I have this past year and a half. I know Mike said something on Sunday that when we're here, We express our joy and love for the Lord, and we do the same outside these walls. Sometimes I have struggled with that, not because I believe in one thing when I'm here and I believe in something else when I'm outside. I'm just not a person that likes to create conflict, and I know people that don't believe, they try to attack you immediately. But I know that that's something that the enemy is trying to use to get you to doubt your faith. But I'm not going to allow that because I know that what God has said that he's going to do for me, for my family, for my relationship, it's going to happen because I believe in him and I trust him. Amen. Amen. Hopefully that makes sense. (laughs) did in my mind, but anyone has any prayer requests or testimony? No? Okay. No? We're good? Yeah, we'll just uh, lift up uh, Rory, Wendy, Alex, and Brad Peavy, his wife, and Jim and Mary, to a new relationship, and also the ministry and all of those affected by their ministry. Amen.
repairs we have to, to do to the house and, and it was some paperwork that I had received. You know, when we're talking about that, we start when we started talking about other things. Uh, one of the things that I've been praying for since this whole thing started is for the Lord to get her out of where she works. Because I know the people that were around her Before this phone call on Monday, uh, I sent her a message, hey, this is what's going on. And uh, she's like, okay, thanks. And then she said, oh, by the way, I got a new job. So I uh, I started asking her about it. We started talking about it. And I, I felt afraid. And I think I had said this here a few weeks ago, but I didn't give any specifics. That's, that's what happened. And I became afraid because she has, she has a new job, she's a different income and all that. I'm like, man, it's not going to get better now because she's going to start taking all this stuff. And that's when the Lord told me, didn't I ask you to trust me? Didn't I tell you that I'm going to make this better? So when she calls me last week and we're talking, we're talking about her, her new job and all that. During the conversation, she says, hey, did you know that this place is coming to town? Coming, I said, when? She said, I don't know, but I know the tickets went on sale last week. So we talking about, we both have expressed desire to go see it. And then she says, uh, hey, see if you can get a discount on the tickets for your work. And I said, did you want to go with me? She's like, well, if you want to go. To me, this, this is a huge step. Yeah. yeah. In an indirect way, she asked me out on a date. Yeah. yeah. So, hey. I know that I want God to give me this, <laughs> but I gotta take this because yeah, yeah. I gotta get ready for this. That's right. That's right. Amen. So, Amen. anyway, thank the Lord. I know it's gonna happen. Yes. I know yeah. it, and I'm happy, and then little by little. But anyway. Amen. Amen. Hi, John. Hi, Sheila. Hey. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Beautiful day. Anyone else want to share anything? Okay, well, let's stand. Oh, and thank the Lord for everything that he has done in our lives and he continues to do and will continue to do. Father, we thank you. Praise God. We faithful. bless you, Jesus. Lord, you've thank given you us so much. The finished work of the cross. And Lord, we thank know that we don't deserve it, but you still give us. Meeting every need. Continue to tell us that you're your deliverance. Thank you. Great revelation. That's how good you are. You've been blessing us. Thanks for giving us the victory, Lord. We bless you and praise you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are graceful. There's none like you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We celebrate, Lord, the victory in you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We love you, Lord. We bless your name and praise you. We exalt you and magnify you, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise God. 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 Praise God.
worship.
life before we do life. Breathe on us this day. Hallelujah. Breathe on us this day. Fresh breath of heaven.
Praise God. God bless. I think I turned it on and then turned it off by accident. I just did it. Please amen. Praise the Lord. While I'm doing this, <laughs> or trying to anyway, I should have Sally come up here. She's a little more mechanically inclined than I am. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But uh, anyway, I'm going to be brief tonight. I do have something I want to share with you, just a, one scripture to begin with, and I think I only have two or three scriptures here, so we'll, we'll move right through this, but if that is not to diminish the, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit or the power of his word, but uh, amen. Saving myself for Sunday, hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Anyway, this will be good, it'll be good for all of us, praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, we're all familiar with that scripture, but uh, let me just read it one more time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I was talking, Sally and I were talking last night, and I said, uh, you know, faith doesn't make anything happen. Now that kind of sounds like a contradiction to what we've learned over the years, but it's true. Faith doesn't make anything happen. Faith is the evidence of things that are not seen. You understand what I'm saying? They already exist. Faith is the evidence of that. Yes. They don't make it happen. It's already happened. Right. Faith is just the evidence of that unseen thing that we know is in the spirit realm that we access into this realm by our spirits. Amen? So faith is the evidence of things not seen, but those things are there already. They're just not seen. Right. Praise the Lord. So, through faith, the invisible reality that already exists becomes our visible experience. Not by our faith, but through our faith. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Through faith, the invisible reality that already exists becomes our visible experience. Or you can say it like this. Through faith, the objective reality becomes our subjective realization. Now, let me 
not that I think you're stupid or anything, but let me put that in context because sometimes we think of objective as being something we're trying to get to, but that's not the case. Objective in this, in this sense, the, script, the, the, the dictionary says objective is pertaining to or dealing with material objects rather than mental concepts. Mm. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. If we say something is, if we have an objective opinion about this or whatever, we're talking about something that pertains or deals with material objects mm. rather than mental concepts. Okay? And then subjective is taking place within or relating to or proceeding from an individual's emotions or mind. So back to what I said. Through faith, the objective reality or the material, natural, whatever, however you want to describe that, amen, becomes our subjective realization or our understanding. The reality, in other words, it it's exists. It's objective. It's a material thing. But through faith, it becomes a subjective realization. In other words, I see it before I see it. Okay. Praise the Lord. That's what we're talking about here. So nothing, because of this, there's nothing that's left for God to do for us. So prayer isn't about us trying to get things from God. Prayer is just simply relating, communicating with God. Yeah. Amen? Because He's already done it all. Yes. Praise the Lord. So, for us then to share the gospel, we're talking about that earlier, taking it outside the walls and so on and so forth. But what are we taking? Well, we're taking the gospel, but in order to share the gospel, and what we're doing when we share the gospel is simply to tell people that it really is finished. Yeah. Yeah. That everything they have need of is already provided. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of agreeing with God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't die. He didn't just die for us. He died as us. Amen? Now, let me ask you a question. Does God do something for us based on what we decide to do? Or is our response based on something he's already done? You see what I'm saying? It goes back to the objective subjective. Mm -hmm. So if I say, well, I'm going to do this, this, and this so that God will do this, you're backwards. Whatever we're doing, we're doing as a result of what he's already done. Amen. We don't do things to get him to bless it or to make us better or, or more fulfilled or more prosperous or whatever. It's the opposite of that. It's just the opposite. Our response to what he's already done, amen, is that we walk in faith. See what I'm saying? I'm not faithing to get God to make something happen. He's already made it happen. And the way that I respond to that is just to have faith. It's just to believe that it's already done. And that's how it happens. Mm -hmm. I can't manipulate God by doing things. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we get, we get, and it's our heart. It isn't that the heart is wrong. It isn't that we're not sincere. But we've been told. If you do this and this and this, and the Lord will bless it. Yeah. You're back, you're, you're coming from behind this thing because God has already blessed everything you set your hand to. Right. right? Right? In other words, he's already provided for you. So you don't have to try to manipulate situations and circumstances to get the blessing. It's already there. You just have to believe it. Amen. For it to manifest. Because he's got millions of ways to bless you. To prosper you, to heal you. And we, when we start thinking the way that I just described, we start limiting God to us, to our way of thinking. And he's not like us in that sense, not, not, not naturally speaking, you know. Praise the Lord. So did it, has anybody ever seen uh, Les, Miserables, 
lay miserable. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I don't speak a lot of French, but you know what I mean. Well, I saw the old, the original version some time ago. And I just saw, again recently, the one with Liam Neeson. And of course, it's, they made a Broadway play out of it, and it's all over. But I, I saw something in that that just really, that struck me as very God-human kind of metaphor. And it's, anybody that's ever seen it, you know, there's this guy by the name of Gene, who was something, I don't even know what his last name was. Valjean, Valjean, yeah. And, uh, and uh, he is kind of a messed up guy. Yeah. And he, he's on the run, he's got problems, and he goes to this bishop, and this bishop, this priest, takes him in. You know, you've seen it, you know. Yeah. He, he's kind, the bishop is, you know, and he's, he you know, reaches out to the guy and helps him out, gives him a place to stay, feeds him. And in the middle of the night, this guy, this gene, John, he, he gets up and steals this silver, this expensive silver that is in the rectory there. Yep. And the bishop hears the noise as he's fumbling around trying to load a bag full of his stuff. And he comes out and this guy, the gene, John, he knocks him down and splits mm -hmm. with the silver. Right. So, uh, you know, time passes and uh, later on, here come the cops the gendarmes, and they come dragging him back in handcuffs. Right. And they kind of, this mocking way the cop says, uh, you know, he tells us, you gave him the silver. You know, it's like, you know, how stupid does he think we are? And the bishop says, that's true, I did give it to him. Yeah. And then he looks at this John and he says, uh, why didn't you take the candlesticks? Because they're worth a couple of thousand francs by themselves. They're worth more than all of this. And then he turns to his housemaid or whatever the gal was, and he says, go get the candlesticks. And the cops are standing there dumbfounded, and even more confounded is this Jean, the one that yeah. ripped him off in the first place. And he brings him back. Then he tells the maid, he says, you know, take the police in there and get him a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of wine or whatever it was. They've had a donut, tough donut, night. Donut, donut. Yeah, <laughs> give him a donut. And, uh, and then this bishop, this priest, he just puts his arms or his hands on the shoulders of this thief, you know, this, and looks him straight in the eye. And this Jean, he says, uh, what are you doing? Why did you do this? You know, he's never experienced anything like this before. Right. And the bishop says, uh, my brother, you no longer belong to evil. With that silver, I bought your soul. Mm -hmm. I've ransomed you from fear and hatred. Yeah. And now I give you back to God. Yes. And the guy is speechless. Uh -huh. yeah. yep. See, forgiveness and grace is difficult for the morality police to grasp. And that's what we're talking about. Faith is not about me having a bunch of how or working to get more faith. Faith is just simply saying, God's already done it. He's already blessed me. He's already provided for me. He's already done everything for me. And just accepting that. Based on this love. That's what grace really is. Grace is a forever growing understanding of the love of God which has no end. There's no end to it. Yes. Grace is simply an expression. It's not a, a thing that God does. It's simply an expression of who he is, of, of what he is, mm -hmm. of a manifestation of his love. Yep. So in grace, moral concepts are no longer you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm, t I'm talking about in terms of God's view. There's no accounting. There, it's done, the, the, the accounting of moral behavior, good or bad, is, is done away with. Right. The books are burned. There's no more record keeping, period. Right. 
We are the righteousness of God. He doesn't measure how good we're doing, how bad we're doing. He's already declared us. It's finished. Everything is finished. If you can believe that, then you can believe that everything that you have need of, God has already provided. Praise the Lord. See, we are all this guy, John. That's the truth of it. And look at, let's look at Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Yes. See, you understand why we can have faith. Let's let me let's go back to Romans chapter eight, and uh, I think it's twenty. Let's see, twenty two, twenty three, somewhere in there. Um, uh, Romans eight, beginning at verse twenty four. And we'll go all the way down through 32. Romans 8, 24 through 32. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Yes. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He's talking about grace. That's a whole uh, kind of uh, oratory on grace. And he sums it up by saying that if he gave us salvation by grace, if he gave us himself or his son by grace, then why would we doubt that he would provide all things the same way. How do you get born again? You confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. The same way everything else is attained in the new covenant. I didn't do anything to get saved. He already told me there was nothing I could do to get saved. Right? I can't do anything to, to be prospered. I can do stuff that God can prosper. But it doesn't matter what it is. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have to try to set things up for that to happen. I just got to believe. And out of that belief, whatever I'm doing is going to prosper. Amen? It's what Roberta was talking about here tonight. You, you just, you believe God. And he says that if you do that, that hope will produce patience. Because you know. And if you know something's going to come to pass, even though you don't know exactly when, you're going to have a whole lot more patience than if you don't know what the outcome's going to be. Right? We live our lives knowing, although we don't have physical, objective, Proof, we have subjective realization 
that it must come. The objective must be the reality based on our subjective, understand, realization or revelation. We see it as though it is before it's visible. It is, it just isn't visible. Right? right. Our family safe. They're safe. Yep. Because he said you and your house will be safe. Yes. We celebrate that even though we don't see it in the natural. We've already had a realization of this. And that's what makes it objective. That's what creates an objective is the subjective realization that you have to have first. That's true of everything. Yeah. Because that's how God works. Yes. He speaks to things that are not as though they are and tells us to do the same thing. Right, right. Because we're created in his image. Yes. Right. And we we know that, but we because we're carnally minded, and I don't mean that in an evil way, I just mean not thinking exactly like God thinks, it forces us then to try to manipulate the word of God to somehow kind of balance with our natural religious way of thinking. Mm -hmm. That God helps them that help themselves. Or that, you know, you do enough right stuff and there's a reward's got to come. You're, you're not rewarded for anything because he did it all up front. That's right. Praise the Lord. I mean, we want to be better people. We want to be good people. We want to do the... But we, we're not... If the moment you start doing it as though that's the reason why you're going to get blessed, it becomes filthy. It becomes right. an abomination to God. It becomes idolatry. Right. It's self-righteousness. Yes. That's why it tells us not to have any sin consciousness. Not that we should not want to do bad things, but if you have a sin consciousness, you're going to have a guilt conscience. And if you've got a guilt conscience, then you're going to try to do things to atone for that guilt. Mm. And the atonement's already been done. Right. He wants us to live out of that finished work in every area of our life. That's the only way he can give us all things. Right. Is the way that he gave us the thing. Right. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to paraphrase this bishop. <laughs> Jesus has declared to us. You no longer belong to evil. You're no longer guilty. With his blood, he has ransomed us from fear, from hatred, and he's given us back to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. There's nothing else you can do. And we, we're like this John. Surely something's going to be required. Uh, I mean, this can't be right. And not only is the guy not going to turn me in and rat me out to the cops, he's given me more. So I can't be a thief. Jesus said if they take your coat, give them your cloak. Because that's the mind of Christ. That's the mind of God. That's the nature of God. We see it as an, an isolated, here's what I want you to do. To prove that you're a good Christian. No, he's saying, this is how I am. Mm -hmm. What you do is what you do, but this is how I am. Right. You can't steal from me. Right. Because I'll just give you more. Uh, that wasn't theft. It's yours. I've already given it to you. Right. I've given you all things. Uh -huh. So we do things and, and we do them in reverse order. We should give. We should be generous. Not because we think that somehow that's going to manipulate God into giving to me, but I'm giving because he's already given it to me. So I don't have to be stingy about it. If I'm doing it out of that motive, I know there will always be more. It will be like a river. Well, our life is to be lived that way. Many of us right here tonight have got that concept when it comes to offerings and tithes. I appreciate that. But well, we need to live our entire life that way. We need to live out the same with our relationships, you know, with our individual finances, with our 
help with the health of others. He did it for everybody. That's why unbelievers get healed. Right? We think, how does that happen? That, they must have got an overflow. Someone must have splashed off of a believer and they got the benefit of it. No, he died for everybody. He suffered those stripes for everybody. Have people that have no theology, have no real concepts of God other than that, you know, he does something evil every once in a while when you're a bad person. And they go somewhere and get healed, get blessed. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And we're thinking, there, there's got to be something I have to do. Mm-hmm. Like this John guy. We're speechless. We're confounded. We're trying to figure out something some way to make sense out of it. Mm-hmm. And all we can do is what he did. Own it. Mm-hmm. Own it. It's yours. All you can do is own it. Mm-hmm. You can't give it back. You can't give back more. You can't even give back part. You just got to own what he's already given you. That's what Christianity is all about. It's owning it. It's accepting it. We talk about him giving us the title deed. That's what he's done. He gave us the silver from the heavenly china cabinet. And he just says, own it. Take ownership. Act like it's yours. Live like you're rich. Live like you're healthy. Live like you're blessed. Live like you're saved. Live like you're eternal. Mm. Live free. And prosper. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Mike. (laughs) Praise the Lord. I think that's kind of like hook them ears, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we say, okay, then if I'm redeemed, why do I sin? Quote, unquote. Because everybody has a different interpretation of sin and a list of big little sin and medium and gray area and whatever. <laughs> but let me ask you this. Did Adam have a sin nature before the fall? was created in the image of God. So why did he sin? He listened to a lie. And we're like Adam. We believe a lie. Now what's the lie? Well, it's the lie that we can meet our own needs. We can do things by ourselves, on our own initiative, by our own ability, instead of living dependent on God. Because that was the original line, it's still the line. Mm-hmm. Oh, you can be like God. If you just eat this fruit. We've been born again in the image of God. The same way Adam was created, we've been redeemed back to that. But we make the same mistakes of going to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because we listen to the lie that I can't bother God with this. Or we convince ourselves that God has told us to do something that he's already done, that he's already provided. I'm not saying people are evil for that. I'm saying that's what religion has taught us. But it's not biblical. Thank God. What he did at the cross was sufficient. Yes. Because he says, my grace is sufficient. Mm-hmm. Sufficient means more than enough. Plenty. For whatever. Mm-hmm. Not just to get you to heaven, but to take care of you on earth. So that you can have, he didn't come to give you an eat out existence until you die. 
and get to heaven. He came to give you life and that more abundantly. Here and now. Not just long life, not just for a living a long time, but living a full life that overflows with blessing. And then forever. Praise the Lord. And he did all that before you could do anything. Before you even wanted to do anything. He'd already done it all. You've been reconciled to God. Own it. Praise the Lord. Live in the freedom of divine acceptance of God's forgiveness of God's provision Amen. and it's not complicated it's only complicated when we try to figure it out there's nothing to figure it out amen we live out of that finished work that's Hebrews 11 1 that's all that's really about Faith isn't going to make God do anything. Faith is simply agreeing with what he's already done. You don't have to have great faith. That's why Jesus told his disciples, you don't need any more faith. If you've got faith with a grain of a mustard seed, there's plenty. Because it doesn't take faith for something that's done. It just takes to believe. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is for us. But more than that, he, he'll stop at nothing to prove it. Amen. 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 All we have to do is believe. Somebody used to say all the time, expect a miracle. Or uh, something good is about to happen. I think it was Oral Roberts. Well, you can agree or disagree with everything about Oral Roberts, but he was right on both those counts. We should expect miracles, and something good is about to happen Amen. every day, every day, all day long, something good is about to happen because God is going to do nothing but bless you with favor and with grace, favor with other people, if you believe it. If you believe you're saved, then believe this and enjoy everything. Let me just close with this. Just own it. It's yours. Just own it. Amen. Live like it's yours. Listen, you'll be the happiest person. You'll have more joy. You'll be more content. And you'll have a, a far greater influence on anybody than you can imagine. You can't influence people for good if you don't feel good. Right? You, you can't be a positive impact on people if you're negative. You can't share Christ, the, the reality of Christ, if you're defeated all the time. They're, they're not seeing Jesus. But somebody who owns it lives, I'm not talking about being arrogant and, you know, haughty and all that. I'm just saying confident, assured, whatever my, I have need of. He's, he's already provided it. I don't need to freak out. I don't need to get all spooked and lay awake all night worrying and fussing with everybody else because, you know, we get all pent up and then we, we can't yell at God, so we yell at each other. And it really all comes down to just not owning it. Not being sure. Adam and Eve, like he's withholding something. If I just knew a little bit more. I'm, I'm absolute proof. You can be dumb as a brick and still get blessed. You don't have to have perfect theology to get saved. Because right. most of us didn't have any theology when we got saved. Go. And those of us that had theology, most of it was wrong. Go. But we still got saved. <laughs> because he'd already done the work. He just looked for somebody to believe in it. Even with our twisted beliefs. Imagine what we can experience if we quit trying to figure everything out,
based on our religious and just start owning what's already ours and experiencing the blessings of God Amen. in every year of life. Amen? Amen. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is good. Let's live like we are somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed. Look forward to seeing you back here Sunday. And Friday night, that's right, by the way. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank you, John. <laughs>